we now have our invocation. Lord, we thank you for this day, this opportunity to gather here tonight. We thank you for this season. We thank you for this new year. We thank you for the opportunities that, that exist for all of us to improve the educational system for all of our children here in New Hanover County. May everything that takes place here tonight be pleasing in your sight and guide us with wisdom, provide us the knowledge necessary and make us ever mindful of the needs of others. In your holy name we pray, amen. Amen. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. At this time, as everyone knows, at our monthly meetings, we have a school. It may be an elementary school one month, a uh, middle school, maybe a high school group uh, that will come in and, and do our national anthem. It, uh, it's a wonderful part of our meeting. It's something everyone enjoys, and I think the students, uh, they also in particular enjoy it. But we're truly honored tonight that uh, these young ladies are members of the North Carolina Elementary Honors Choir. And I was given a little bit of information before they introduce themselves to you and tell you what grade they're in and what school they're from. Uh, I was just given information a few minutes ago that across the state, the Honor Choir is made up, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Markley, 200 students from across the state are selected. Now, a little pop quiz, I know you weren't expecting this, but if you know the answer, raise your hand. How many school systems are in the state? Raise your hand if you know. Y'all up here, you can't you take part. 115. So the 115 school systems that are represented in this choir, New Hanover County has 20%. We had 17 students 10%. make that. So what's that? 20, 10%. 10%? Higher than 10%, isn't it? That, that's still, I was a history major, not math. <laughs> uh, but that's still a very good uh, representation from this county. And the first thing that popped in my mind, and I don't want to embarrass George Ann Hass with our arts program and so forth, but the, the programs that we have here in New Hanover County, when I look around at other counties around the state, even our surrounding counties in southeastern North Carolina, we have a really good arts program in our schools, and we're always, I know they're always striving to improve it. We as a board have been committed for years, because that's one of the first things that gets cut when, when things get tight are the arts programs. George Ann, have we, have we cut you or done anything? No, we, we support the arts very strongly. <laughs> Thank you. 
And as I always say, the highlight of my year, and I mean this seriously, is best foot forward when it takes place. So if you have not been to best foot forward, because that's a representation from many, many of our schools, and you'll see singing groups like this, drama, dance, all types of things. So we're very proud of our program, and we're very proud of these young ladies. Now, having said that, if there's a microphone up there, if they'll pass it around, and if they'll tell us their name, what grade they're in, and what school they represent. I'm Amelia Del Savio, and I'm in fourth grade, and I go to Holly Tree Elementary. I'm Molly Schutte. I'm a fourth grader at Coddington. I'm Ella Pfeiffer, and I'm in fifth grade, and I go to Holly Tree Elementary. My name is Elena <coughs> Giever, and I'm in fifth grade, and I go to Bellamy Elementary. I'm Riley Moore, and I am a fifth grader at Ogden Elementary. I'm Alexa Lacanyara. I'm a fifth grader, and I go to Holly Tree Elementary. I'm Samantha Limes, and I'm from and I'm from Holly Tree, and I'm in fourth grade. I'm Georgia Smith. I'm in fifth grade, and I go to Ogden Elementary. My name is Jennifer Senta. I go to Eat. I go to Eaton Elementary, and I'm in the fifth grade. My name is Katie Mounts, and, I, and I'm a fifth grader, and I go to Blair Elementary. I'm Ella Shinat, and I am a fifth grader at Coddington Elementary. I'm Avery Limley, and I'm a fifth grader at, Col at Coddington Elementary. My name is Leah Marshall. I'm a fourth grader, and I go to Bellamy Elementary. My name is Bailey Hughes, and I'm a fifth grader at Pine Valley. Now, my sheet does not show who the ladies are with the group, so if y'all would like to identify yourselves, please. I'm Susan Gardner, the music teacher at Holly Tree Elementary. Mary Tyndall, the music teacher at Coddington Elementary. And there's others of us. <laughs> Lynn Stemke at Ogden Elementary. I'm Amanda Henson, I'm at Blair Elementary. Emily Probst, Bellamy Elementary. Vicki Stump, Pine Valley Elementary. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. If our color guard could come back up and please introduce yourselves. <clears throat> what grade you're in, your rank. I know you're from Hoggard High School. So if you'll give us your, your rank and uh, what grade you're in. <laughs> no, we're not going to make them do that. <laughs> uh, Cadet Ensign Thompson from Hoggard High School. I'm in 10th grade. Cadet, Cadet Ensign Opisa, John T. Hoggard High School, sophomore. Cadet Seaman Tripp, John T. Hoggard High School, 9th grade. Cadet Seaman Kerman, John T. Hoggard High School, 9th grade. Thank you. Now, I would never be biased because we also have Air Force units and Army units uh, and a Naval unit. Uh, and having been part of the Naval service, obviously, you guys are really sharp. You did a tremendous job tonight. Really, I was surprised. I didn't know the Navy could do stuff. The Navy I was in couldn't do what you guys did tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you looked real sharp. Thank you. <laughs> also, the principal of Hoggard is Dr. Steve Sullivan and the instructors, uh, I don't know, I guess they're Richard Duchargo uh, and uh, Roderick Schaefer. So we, we appreciate them being here tonight. Well, that's the highlight of the meeting. <laughs> Ms. Adams, yeah, we'll all go home. Ms. Adams, you call the roll, please. Donald S. Hayes. Here. Jeanette S. Nichols. Here. Janice A. Cavanaugh. Here. Tammy J. Kobel. Here. Lisa Easta. Here. Edward B. Higgins. Here. Bruce T. Schaff. Here. Thank you. Uh, item two, uh, on the agenda, approval of the agenda. Any additions, deletions? None. Move for approval. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It's approved. Item three is approval of Minutes, item A, uh, approval of minutes from our regular meeting, November the 10th, 2014. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Any questions? 
All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Approved. Item B, minutes of our special meeting on December the 16th, 2014. Move for approval. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Item C, a minutes from our work session on December the 16th, 2014. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. All those, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Approved. Item four is recognition of achievement at this time. Good evening, everyone. January is School Board Appreciation Month. So for, yay. <laughs> so for this evening, we would like to recognize our esteemed Board of Education for esteemed, yes, I said that. She didn't say infamous. <laughs> Notorious? <laughs> um, for your service to our community. The gifts in front of you with the gold foil, those are gifts from us um, for your dedication and your service to New Hanover County Schools and to the community. Would everyone please join me in honoring our great Board of Education? And the popcorn was presented by Pine Valley oh, Elementary, who also wanted to give you a gift. So please know that you are appreciated. And when you open your gift, you will see that it has a special artwork design, which is featured up here. And the artwork was provided by Ms. Riley Wood's art class at Castle Hayne Elementary. And if you recall, at a recent board meeting, Ms. Woods was recognized for her designation as a top art educator by the Art Museum Artsonia. So for this special honoring of our board, we've invited Ms. Woods and her students to be recognized for contributing to the board's gift and also to thank them for their great artwork. So um, Castle Haynes students, when I say your name, if you would please come forward so we can recognize you, Brianna Griffin. No, okay. Ava Keeter. I don't think they're excited about the board. They're not. <laughs> okay, Jaden McMillan. Okay, there she is. I Wait, think her mother wanted to take that, a picture. That's, that's her principal. Oh, I'm sorry, her principal. <laughs> I didn't even see who it was. <laughs> okay, Xavier Myers. You all stay up there. We'll get a group picture with your principal. Amanda Rainey. Natalie Runyon. There she is. And Howell Wood. Okay, well, if Howell's not here, is Ms. Riley Woods here? Can you please come up and join your students? And the principal, Ms. Cindy Bliss, would you come up? And we'd like for the families of these brilliant young Picassos to stand up so we could recognize and thank you as well.
Thank you, Castle Hain. And our final recognition of the evening is for Ms. Rebecca Clark, who is the PE and health teacher at Virgo Preparatory Academy. And she's also our middle school teacher of the year. Ms. Clark has been selected as the 2014 Middle School Physical Education Teacher of the Year by the North Carolina Physical Education Association of North Carolina Alliance for Athletics, Health, PE, Recreation, Dance, and Sports Management. This award reflects Ms. Clark's outstanding qualities and contributions as a professional physical educator. Ms. Clark, if you would please come forward, we would love to honor you at this time. And also, And we see um, Mr. Irizarry is here. If you'd like to come forward, and if you have any family members, if you'd like to stand. <laughs> They're shy. <laughs> the family's shy. Any shy family members? Congratulations, Ms. Clark. <laughs> That's it. And we are honored to have the top PE teacher in the state. Mm Next item on the agenda, item five is our call to the audience. We have two call to the audiences. The first one is a call to the audience where individuals may sign up, speak for three minutes, and speak on an agenda item that's on the agenda. At the end of the meeting, we have a non-agenda call to the uh, audience. We've had uh, no one sign up for the agenda related items, we have two individuals that have signed up for the call to the audience at the end of the meeting. Uh, there is a policy, and I think the board is aware that uh, a request has been made from an individual that's on the second call to the audience to speak at the beginning at the call to the audience. Uh, and I just simply I talked to Mr. Bullard, and since there is a policy on this, what uh, I would do is entertain a motion from the board, uh, if the board so desires, to allow that, but it would take uh, a majority of the board to Move approve that. Approval. I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any comments, questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. I'm sorry, can we show yes? Okay. Let's go again. Uh, all those in favor, and this time you can raise your hands. Uh, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, four. Okay, so it would be four, three in favor. So at this time. Um, may, Mr. Hayes, may I explain why I voted no? Sure. It's not that I don't want to accommodate our parents and our community members, but we do have a policy of which we can always change. But the fact that we have others who are going to wait through the meeting it isn't fair to allow one when maybe they could have attended another meeting, uh, say in February, um, or had emailed us or sent information to uh, Dr. Markley's office. So um, I just think when we set a precedence, we have to remember that for all the other um, 
members who are community members. Jeanette, let me just clarify the vote, uh, if I can. Since we don't have anyone signed up to speak at, on agenda-specific items. We do. I'm sorry. On agenda items? Yes. No. 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 These are non-agenda oh, items. No. no. Nobody on agenda related oh, to or non-agenda. Right. Oh, non-agenda. Yeah. Yes. I, I'm sorry. I, it was my understanding that we were voting to move all of the speakers who were on, who are, uh, are signed up to speak on non-agenda items to that portion of the meeting. So we're not, we're not um, playing Staying favorites with a specific oh. person. We're just going to allow them to go ahead rather than sit through the rest of the meeting. That that was my understanding as as to how that. Yeah, but that, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Move, move, because it move wouldn't be fair. all of them then? Yeah. Both. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and I would just like reiter to reiterate what Mrs. Nichols said was the reason uh, I had voted no, uh, because there is a policy, uh, I think, in the future. Uh, we may as well do away, if we're going to do this, we may as well do away with the second call to the audience. I'd vote uh, for that. Pardon? I'd vote for that. <laughs> to do I mean, away I'm with a, I, I thought it was kind of, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought it was kind of strange that we what we did uh -huh. <laughs> but you know i mean that was what what we did and so well, i adhered to the policy but i would support just, just going back the, the way we used to have okay. it call to the audience then uh, we limited to 30 minutes total mm, well okay. you're right that, that's what the policy used to be and i certainly have no problem you know with going back to that it's just this is the policy now but i, I think the policy committee will take it under we'll, consideration we will bring it back uh, to bring it in back in february yes and if the board so desires we can eliminate the and thank call. you mrs coble for i didn't realize that when he said that but i just didn't want to appear to be playing favorites or not being fair to and i agree and that's why that's why i wanted yeah. to clarify that because i think if we're going to allow one person we should allow well, all yeah of I, yes. I didn't explain that real well but okay. that was my understanding that if we do this then both uh, individuals uh, okay. can move forward uh, but I will reiterate that the policy the rest of the policy that we are going to hear to does say three minutes Dr. Holliday is our timer so we would appreciate it if you would keep it uh, to three minutes first uh, individual to sign up Daniel McIntyre all that and they're not here well they mm -hmm. may know that it be later. well that's true they so may come later to. we'll come back to Daniel possibly we'll, uh, Give we'll give him another chance. Uh, second speaker, Mr. Chad O'Shields. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hmm? Um, I prepared a PowerPoint presentation for Mr. Holliday, but uh, I was told I was not allowed to, to present that to the board. Here's a copy that I submit to okay. you with the meeting minutes from today. I appreciate the opportunity to address the board today. My name is Chad O'Shields. Um, I am a Wilmington native, a graduate of the University of North Carolina here at Wilmington with a background in finance and economics. And it's great that you guys were talking about policy and fairness because that's what I'm here to discuss today. Um, I regret I'm not able to use the PowerPoint because it'd make this a lot easier to follow. To make a long story short, there was a proposal request for uh, quote 218.16-15. It was a long mowing contract, essentially, um, I'm doing this in a nutshell. It was put out to bid three times. So this is, a, this is an ongoing process. The, the third time, there were two bids that were accepted. Um, and after the bid date of August, uh, I think it was August 25th, um, there were two bidders, True Green and Steve Dejewski Landscaping. After the bids were submitted, uh, Sean Allen, purchasing agent, noticed uh, some irregu irregularities in True Green's bid that they didn't appear to meet part of the specification. She emailed True Green and said, hey, you don't appear to meet this specification. You don't have the equipment. Uh, specifically, the specification read that all fields shall be mowed with a real mower, Bermuda, because that's what's best for Bermuda, so it's a very specific thing. It's a mandatory thing, matter of fact, because it's shall. Shall, when used in legal terms, means something that's mandatory. So Shauna emails True Green and asks him about it. Adent, again, the condensed version is True Green responded back and said, hey, we, we don't have the equipment. We can't meet that spec. Matter of fact, to meet that spec, we'd have to raise our price. We'd have to buy this piece of equipment. Shauna interns, again, copies of these emails are in the documents that I submitted. Shauna then emails staff correctly and says essentially, hey, True Green does not be, meet these requirements. Uh, 
their, their pricing, she, I quote, pricing is not valid in her opinion, and she considers it a non-bid. That's exactly right. They don't meet the spec. They don't meet the spec the county, the school has put out there. Later that day, um, uh, General Counsel Wayne Bullard sends out an email to staff that says, hey, they don't, they, they, uh, their bid does not include the real more. Um, acknowledges that the real more essentially is, is a price difference, a pretty significant price difference. And um, he suggests we waive that requirement for True Green and suggests that they can just come back later on and add the cost for that if needed. Again, these are all in the documents. The problem with that is that's a, that's a costly part of the specification that was waived for one vendor only. That gave True Green a significant and unfair pricing advantage. And this type of favoritism in public purchasing is unlawful. Not only that, but a contract was signed for services that were not going to be provided. The contract called for rope mowing by real mower. That was not going to be done. And then the suggestion was made that you could just come back and amend the contract later. And I'm going to give you school policy on these issues. Changes to the specification are to be posted as an addendum. Once that specification was changed. I, I don't know how long this is going to go, but your time is up. So. If you could give me another. I think it's important that the public. It, it is important, but I don't know if this is the proper time or venue to get into the contracts and so forth. Uh, this is, uh, if you pardon me, just one second. But, but did you realize coming in here, did you not, Mr. O'Shea, that you had three minutes to do this? I absolutely I did, sir. And I asked that this be, this be waived. I mean, does, does this not violation of school policy and and the school board's own policy, does that not concern you? Is this, it should be transparent, Don, and it's not. All I hit is walls. Don, we've been waiting four months for documents, for public records requests. Four uh, months. How do you explain that on this issue? Well, I don't really know, because I have seen some emails, but you, know but you, you have not know. stated in your emails what your concern was. Had we known what your concern was, I think this could have already been addressed if the it board was aware of it, which they're not. I, 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 Don, out of respect, it needs to be addressed in a public forum. Everything's handled. When I sent you an email, it, your, your attorney response. You know, I know Wayne's doing his job, but everything's filtered through Wayne. There's not a public form, and, and this just gets pushed back. When, when, when you wait four months for public records, you're not going to get justice. You're, this transparency, this is not a transparent. The, 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 purchasing po the purchasing process should be open, transparent, and fair, and it's not. You guys tonight were talking about your policies and about being fair, and this is not. It's not at all. And but but see, I, 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 we certainly want to. I agree with what you're right. saying. Don't misunderstand that right. I do not. I just don't think this is the proper form right here in this time frame. You have made us aware of it. I wish I was aware of it prior to this, and we could have already been checking into what your 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 concern is. is How can we do this in a public for us forum? To ask? Right that Mr. O'Shields meet with the chairman and the superintendent to give information? Is Only if possible? the press is allowed to be, thank you. If the press is allowed to be there, I would agree to that. In transparency. I don't care who's there. Uh, but that might be a better form. I don't really think, uh, Mr. Board, I think you would agree. Can you make a recommendation as to how Mr. O'Shields could address his concern? To, I don't know who he's, what has been addressed and to whom? Well, typically the way that the public addresses the board is they'll, they'll send information uh, to the board members. They'll send written complaints. We have a public complaint policy uh, that, that anybody can exercise and fill out a complaint, send it to the board. Um, they can also ask to speak to individual board members, which apparently he has done. Uh, to my knowledge, he hasn't sent any substantive information to any board member or to me or to anybody else explaining what his concern is, despite the fact that we've specifically asked him to state his concerns, he refused to do that until tonight. I'd so like to it, ask it's the board's discretion as to how to address it, but typically people, if they have a complaint, they'll put it in writing and submit it to you so that you can look into mm -hmm. it and respond. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask that Mr. O'Shields meet with the chairman and the superintendent and that um, press be allowed to be there if that's what they want. Well, you know, I I have no problem, uh, but uh, I said no one knew. All I knew was that I had seen some emails from you requesting right. certain emails, but I had no idea what you were talking about or whatever. And the attorney, which is proper in my opinion, did respond uh, to it. The board can't respond to something that we don't know what the concern is. Uh, and now what you have made us aware of it, and certainly we want to uh, uh, 
I don't think it can be handled at this meeting. That's why I recommend yeah. that y'all meet together. And, 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 and to that, thank you very much. I want the entire board to be aware, not just a few members. And that's why I chose this forum. A couple, another two minutes in my presentation would have been done and I walked out of here. And, you know, I have sent these requests to Wayne. Again, he's the one in, that's been involved in the public records request. And when that's taking four, you know, some of these records requests by others on the same issue, it's been out there four months, Don. But, but, but you've sent yes. a request concerning emails. You have not sent a, that I'm aware of, anything stating what your concern was. And I wish I had known what your concern was. We could have been possibly remedying that. Right. Well, that's why I came here tonight to do that, to inform the board, but that's not going to be allowed to happen. Okay, well, that's very disappointing. we've taken up more time than we normally do. Actually, it's a three-minute slot. What I'll do is I will speak to Mr. Bullard, the board attorney, and then I will contact you, and we'll set up whatever based upon our board attorney. An email from you, Don, will be greatly appreciated. Okay. Thank you, sir. Can, you I, can I request that um, Mr. Shields um, forward your PowerPoint presentation to the board members we'll as well? We've we got it. Uh, you got a copy, and I'll forward that to Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, item six, administrative personnel. Item A, administrative recommendations, Dr. Marker. All right, we have two administrative recommendations this evening. First one is for our AIG uh, supervisor recommendation, and our recommendation is Donna Sloan. Ms. Sloan is currently the AIG teacher at Holly Shelter, previously served as an AIG teacher at Alderman, uh, gifted teacher at Virgo and at Rowe, and an AIG teacher at Johnson Elementary. And prior to teaching New Hanover, she served as the uh, academically gifted language arts teacher at Virgo Middle. The contract will be effective until June 30th, 2017. She has a master's degree in language arts and literacy from UNCW and uh, her bachelor's degree is from UNCW as well. Move for approval. Second. Comments, Third. please. <laughs> Pardon? Third. Third. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Ms. Long? Oh, there she Stand up. And Please introduce who you, yeah. uh, who you brought with you. Just welcome aboard. <laughs> Our second recommendation is for an assistant principal at Ashley High School. And that recommendation is Kimberly Morrissey. Uh, Ms. Morrissey is currently a special ed teacher at Ashley and prior to this position served as the IBS teacher at Bellamy and is taught in London for a year. The administrative contract will be in effect until June 30th, 2017. She has a master's degree from UNCW and a bachelor's degree from UNCW as well. Move for approval. Second. Any comments, questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Is Ms. Morrissey here? What do you have with you, Kim? Well, best friend and sister. <laughs> <laughs> and I would also recognize her principal, Ms. Jackson Norville, who is in uh, over here as well. So, Thank welcome you. aboard. Thank you. That concludes the administrative recommendations. All right, next on the agenda, item seven, under Head Start. Uh, item A is a Head Start report from our liaison, Mr. Higgins, and I think it's gonna take them, are you? No, I'm, I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready, I'm ready. Mr. Higgins. Uh, I'm going to be somewhat brief because I do note in the agenda that uh, uh, LaShawn's going to be speaking to some of the items we went over at the uh, 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 Board of Directors meeting. But uh, just to say, um, we did have a meeting on uh, December the 18th. Um, it, we've, the plan is that we will be meeting the third Thursday of each month uh, there is not a meeting this month but starting in, in february there will be a meeting the third thursday and henceforth uh, i have asked uh, shannon uh, to provide a list of meeting dates to uh, 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 valinda to, uh, uh, so she can publish them uh, the a uh, couple of things though uh, there's a non-competing application that has to be prepared, and it's required by February. It's a, it's a guesstimate of what we think the budget will be for next year, because they have no past history to operate from. I mean, they haven't even done a year yet. 
So uh, they're going to submit a request for $1.9 million to the feds. Um, there are also non-federal dollars that are supplied by us, the Board of Education, to the tune of $481,000. Uh, but parental support also counts to make up some of those dollars. Um, those are in-kind contributions. It's the in-kind contribution, yeah. Um, but just to give you an idea, $18,000 travel by teacher and social workers associated with this. Um, administrative costs cannot exceed 15%, and then currently it's at 14.51% of, uh, of the budget. Um, the, there are 943 early childhood students currently being supervised under Head Start, 14 and a half classes at Johnson, 10 in private centers, six in the public schools, other public schools, and 260 students directly in the Head Start program itself. Uh, it works out to a cost of uh, uh, whatever, $7.89 times 1,172 students. I didn't, I didn't do, have a calculator with me, and I didn't do the math, but you can uh, do that. They do expect to have 1,400 applicants by March for the coming year. Uh, parents must complete an eligibility scorecard to be submitted to the program, and I was given a copy. I didn't bring it with me, but uh, priority is given to four-year-olds, and three-year-olds are put on a waiting list. It's unlikely a four-year-old will be on the waiting list because obviously the next year they're going on to pre-K. Uh, they have submitted a uh, transportation waiver because they are, have been allotted three buses. The waiver <coughs> allows students to ride regular school buses rather than having special buses. Uh, this kind of waiver already exists in uh, Cleveland, Cabarrus, Asheville City Schools and has been approved. Uh, the waiver has been submitted but has not yet been approved. Uh, January 21 and, 20, and 22nd, there will be a preschool kickoff, and I think that pretty much sums up what we did at that meeting. Okay. I, I have a question. Questions? Go ahead, Ms. Shell. Um, I, I didn't, I wasn't picking up on all the student numbers. Okay. But in the history of this, it talks about uh, uh, 755 made up of third and fourth graders and some other, but I think you had a higher number than that. I did. I had a uh, 943, and that in, but those are also students. <coughs> There's 260, which if you took those, I guess, off the 943 would be about 780-some, uh, uh, but they're actually in the Head Start program. There are other students, and, and this was something I had to have them explain to me. There are other students at Johnson itself. Uh, there are 10 private centers that have students, and I don't know how, I can't tell you how many are in those private, those private centers. Uh, there are six other uh, sites within the public school system that Head Start also supervises. So that's when you put all those together, it came up to the 943. Now, again, they're expecting 1,400 applicants in March, and whether or not they, it's, they're slotted. They've, they're given so many slots. and they've if, if I could of, add some, um, excuse me, I'm sorry. If okay. I could add some additional clarification. Um, <clears throat> under the umbrella of early childhood education, we serve not only Head Start students, but also NC Pre-K students. And so we have the 260 um, Head Start students, um, and we do serve those students at Johnson, and at Johnson as well, we do have some um, NC Pre-K students, and the NC Pre-K students are the ones that are served at the private sites as well as Howe, and then also at Castle Hayne, um, Wrightsboro, and um, Mary C. Williams, well, actually c -Rec. Okay. and Freeman as well. It's kind of complicated, but Ms. Miles has a different does a pretty good job of keeping the pots all separate. Yes. Well, that's what I, when I, when they, you know, I thought there were only 200 and some Head Start students, period. That's about right. Well, but somehow uh, then these other students 
are somehow covered and, and again, I tried to understand it, but I, I'm there's, still learning. It's really two pots of money. The federal money is Head Start. The yes. state money is NC Pre-K. Okay. So when you're thinking about Pre-K education, they'll either be paid for with federal dollars, Head Start, or state dollars, NC Pre-K. But I was trying to get straight. Who is administering this, this money? Both. We administer both pots. We administer both pots. But what, uh, you know, I was trying to understand from at the meeting exactly how they arrived at this 943 number and when I asked the question uh, that's how it was explained to sure me. just adding both groups together adding both groups together but uh, you know I, uh, it, this is a learning process I mean uh, apparently uh, hit start is a is a real well is there some very big some there's similar programs and they both serve four-year-olds and, and some three-year-olds but the instructional models are, are, are different and so we and who pays for what you got to keep separate it's one it's a juggling act sometimes and what what were you can you clarify the 1400 um, they said they were expecting 1400 applications and applications application for, for just the head start is that what you're for thinking? I guess both. now what I'm hearing is probably for both yes both. all yes. early childhood um, available slots for okay. next year and and the criteria known, for enrollment is a little different for each for the yeah there's some some slightly different criteria for each okay and if you'd like we can get you maybe a, a cheat sheet for that that'd be great thank you but that's what I have as notes from from that uh, December meeting thank you mr. Higgins any other questions for mr. Higgins Thank you. Uh, item B, uh, Head Start Written Plans for 2014-15, Appendix B, Doc Smith. Yes, thank you. Um, I have before you um, Appendix B, which as um, Mr. Chairman has shared, are the Head Start Written Plans for the 2014-2015 school year. These plans are written and specify how, how New Hanover County Schools um, early childhood program will meet and administer the program and meet all the federal requirements of the program. And I would ask for your approval um, of these um, written plans and, and happy to answer any questions that you might have regarding these written plans. I was beating on my computer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We need approval to. Well, yeah, we, we are asking for approval of the um, written plans for the adherence to the program performance standards for the Head Start program. And I'm glad to answer any questions that you might have in regards to their development or um, the requirements therein. Move for approval. <coughs> Second. Questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It's approved. Item C, Head Start Non-Competing Continuation Grant 2015-16, Appendix C, Dr. Smith. Yes, thank you. Um, before you, Appendix C is the Head Start Non-Competing Continuation Grant. That is what um, Mr. Higgins referenced. Um, you have before you a summary of what we project those costs to be um, and our non-competing um, application. So I would ask for your approval um, of this request. Move for approval. Second. Second. Comments, questions? I have a, a few questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, on, the, on the first page, you have the Head Start um, budget categories, and you've broken them down by operation. Um, the non-federal share, which is the 481057, which I, I'm assuming is the in-kind contribution. Um, when, you, when you scroll down to the second page, I'm just wondering where you, res, where you got the $2,405,000 total budget amount, because the amount that you have displayed on the first page is a little different, and I'm not sure if, if I'm just not looking at this correctly. It should be if we add all three of those um, columns together, that that number should be that total. Okay, I see. I 
actually, no, no, no. If you add those together, that doesn't even, let's see. Jenny, can you add some, elaborate to that then? Um, that bottom line number is categorized from your technical training assistance money, mm -hmm. along with your program operational money, along with your non-federal share dollars. Okay. I and they, they, they aggregate that data and they toss <laughs> it around and you're looking at three summary reports. Uh, uh, that's what I was, I needed clarification on because I had assumed that, that one eight uh, that 1897 included the 481. Mm -hmm. I thought I didn't realize you had broken it out yeah. that way. And okay. Ms. Koval, this is an online reporting system, and when we do it and enter the data in there, if there was any errors or the bottom lines did not align per our request, it, it wouldn't let me process it. Okay. Yes. I need so that. So thank you for that. Yes. I need that for my checkbook. Uh, and then um, the second question, I'm sorry if I jumped in from yes, somebody. Um, the um, number four, the cost per child, I just wanted um, clarification. I think um, Mr. Higgins mentioned this. So the overall cost per child hour, or per child per hour is 789. Um, total hours of service per child, 1172. H how do you calculate the hours of service? Is that based on the, the amount of time that's in the, you know, that the children are in the, in the classroom, how do you calculate yes, that? Yes, so that would be the, the amount of time that the children are in the classroom, transportation I believe is included in that, and also the home visits. Oh, okay. So total cost per child is $9,211.92. Yes. Thank you. What was the total again per Just child? Just over $9,000. $9 $9,211.92, give or take. <coughs> yeah, that's an average. I mean, some students who have special needs would be on the higher end of that, and a student who doesn't would be on the lower end of that. Mr. Chairman? And that's all covered by federal and state dollars. And, yeah, and in kind is, and our in kind. Okay. Yes. Any other questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Items approved. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Under information, item eight, item A, sold out school drug and alcohol education program, Appendix D, Mr. Shell. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I had uh, the opportunity to talk with Roman Gabriel on the telephone, and then again today we had coffee to chat a little bit. And uh, I had asked at our last meeting, and I appreciate the accommodation for, uh, for Mr. Gabriel to come and speak about his program addressing uh, drugs and alcohol for uh, children in the schools. And I'm, I'm not going to repeat what he said because I might be stealing some of his thunder, but um, uh, Mr. Gabriel's uh, Dad is somewhat of a legend in, uh, in our community for many of us that, that know Roman Gabriel Sr. But uh, Roman Jr. Uh, graduated with a degree in speech communications, University of New Mexico college football quarterback. Um, he played for the Oakland Raiders and the Boston Breakers USFL in the early 80s. Uh, presently, he uh, works with uh, sold out school as president. He's worked with children since 1997. He's committed. I'm impressed with his passion. I'd like to introduce Roman Gabriel. Mr. Chairman, do you know how long this presentation is going to be? My understanding was 15 minutes. A little over 15 is fine. Pardon? That's fine, sir. Okay. I mean, that's, that's what I was told. I don't. Yeah. Okay. I think I sent some information to y'all that was previous uh, that I hope that you received and will help uh, with this part of it. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, Chairman Hayes, the board. Uh, Dr. Marthley, nice to meet you in person. Uh, been looking forward to that. Thank you for the opportunity. 
Uh, Dr. Holliday, how are you? Uh, my two went to Laney when you were vice, pre vice principal there. <laughs> so, uh, there you go, there you go. So I'm um, excited to be here today and have the opportunity to uh, present uh, my program. Uh, I'm going to make this real simple. Um, it, I'm, I'm excited to have the opportunity, first of all, just to address you and for you to see what our program looks like. Um, I think the best way to do that is, um, is Tabitha or Dawn in here? Do you have that video ready? I'm just going to show you a video of what our program looks like, a short video, and then I'm going to have a couple of slides and then take your, take your questions. Thank you.
places in that video that didn't translate, but uh, ba basically what we're excited about with this program is I've been working with students and working with junior high and high school students for about 25 years uh, in programs in Arkansas schools, uh, Kansas schools. Um, I spoke in middle schools and high schools here back in the mid-90s. Uh, but when I moved to Boone with my wife, um, I was told by some people in the community that the D.A.R.E. program had been severely cut or completely cut. And they didn't realize that their kids weren't getting a drug and alcohol education program, not to say that people weren't doing things, but um, one of the things that I have enjoyed about where we are right now with kids is that uh, the new technology has opened up some doors that we never had before. Um, this new technology, a lot of schools are going to computer curriculums. Uh, a lot of the schools I work with are working where they give a freshman in high school a computer and they give a middle schooler an iPad. Uh, so they are making opportunities for them to be very savvy with the web. About 80% of students do their communicating on one of these. Uh, so what we've been able to do with our website, it's an all-in-one website. On that website, as you heard, at every assembly we give them an opportunity to take a public pledge. I believe a public and accountable pledge is critical to success in getting kids to take ownership of the problem. Number one, we're asking them to do that in front of their peers, in front of their teachers, coaches, and principal, which is sometimes tough for middle schoolers and high schoolers to do that. It means they're gonna have to make a commitment. Two, we ask them to hold their friends accountable to that decision, meaning that there's accountability with that decision. Three, we ask them to go home, to tell their parents that they made that decision, and to have a talk with their parents about alcohol. And as you all know, one of the toughest jobs as a parent, because I did it with mine, is to have that conversation with them. Sometimes parents will say, well, my kids would never do that. My kids, I know they're not doing that, and out of sight, out of mind. But we've heard from responses from students telling them that they've gone home, spoken to their parents, had this conversation, and that their parents became engaged in this problem. Um, this isn't just... Uh, you know, a child problem. It's a, it's a community-wide problem in all communities in our country, and it's not just students, it's adults as well. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do, uh, if you'll put the first slide up, I can go through the statistics, and many of you guys have seen this. It's just a, a CDC survey that just came out, and we had a, another one here recently, that 9 million youths aged 12 to 20 in this country report they've consumed alcohol in the past 30 days. If you'll go down for me, please. Uh, one of the other figures is, is that middle schoolers are about 11% of that figure that are drinking and that uh, many of them are binge drinking and that there's six kids dying a day of binge drinking in our country. And they're also getting behind the wheel and they're getting in cars with people who drink. So the goal of our program isn't to tell them no, isn't to tell them you shouldn't do this because they're already smart enough to know that. Our goal with this program is to get them to say yes to what they need to say yes to, and that is their future, their goals, their dreams, their opportunities, what they're capable of. So a lot of our program is about life skills, equipping them to be able to make good decisions today that hopefully will turn into habits later on. Now I also understand in talking to lots of superintendents across the state, we're in about 21 counties, including Pitt County, Pender County, Brunswick County, Carteret County, Craven County, Harnett County, um, when talking to superintendents and principals, what they said is the hardest thing to do with students is to motivate them right now because they have a sense of entitlement. What our program does is it breaks that down. We talk to the students about how you have to earn what you get and how getting something for nothing doesn't exist and that a sense of entitlement of thinking that you can go through the motions and thinking you can just show up and thinking you can just give the minimum effort is not going to cut it in your future in terms of getting ready for high school, college, and a career. We also understand that some students are wanting to go into the military, that some students want to get a skill and go right to work, that they're not all college material. So our program provides them a 365 day a year interactive program that attacks them right where they live. Through texts on their telephone that they agree to, through a pledge program <coughs> that they go online and take that pledge, those comments that you saw is what I received the same day that I'm in a school. I'll get 30 to 40 to 50 of those comments immediately. Because that poster that we put up that has the QR code goes directly to our website and pledge program. So for example, when I went into Harnett County at the end of November, which this will be our third, second year in Harnett County, the posters were already set up with the QR code. The principals were aware of that. 
At the end of the assembly, when I went over how to take that pledge and how, what they had to do to do that and how they could access our tools online, our, our life skills curriculum and program, basically what they did is get right out of the assembly, took their phone, went to the QR code, took the pledge, and those comments that you saw are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments that I get within 24 hours of being at a school where they're sharing with me what they learned sharing with me what they learned about making a commitment to be alcohol abstinent, sharing with me about how they plan to deal with their family who struggles with alcohol. I have about 35%, as high as 35% of students that share with me, that have the courage to do that in an assembly and tell me that they go home to one alcoholic at least in their home. I have students that share with me that they went home and shared with their alcoholic father or mother, would you please stop drinking and would you join me in this pledge. It's important that we engage the community. Another thing that we do is we get a lot of newspaper coverage obviously because we bring guests in with us that are from the world of military, uh, law enforcement. Uh, you saw uh, Ben David who came out with us, uh, district attorney in Pender County. He was with us in four occasions. Um, he loves our program and promotes it and would like to see it in New Hanover County. And we work well together because he shows the back end and I talked to him about the front end, about what you need to do to be successful. And then he talked about on the back end when you make mistakes, what's the ramifications of that. So before I get into about four slides very quickly, um, I was in Pender County in October and uh, uh, what, what, September. Um, I brought uh, with me uh, William Colley, who is a student services director of Pender County, who was at all of our events in Pender County. We spoke to every middle school student uh, in sixth and seventh grade, and that's the emphasis of our program, incoming sixth and seventh graders, because that's where they're starting. If we can get them early, because they're open to information, they still haven't made decisions, most of them, about what they're going to do with drinking and drugs. So if you challenge them early, get them in our program, get them on our follow-up program, then what we're doing with this is we're having them take advantage of being the ones who take responsibility for the program, which is the only way a program can work. It's student-run, student-inspired. Uh, uh, and we have a lot of inspired students, about 4,000 that are on our follow-up program, many that are with us in Christmas vacation and spring vacation and in summer. So if, uh, very quickly, I, I appreciate William coming and just to share with you about what he saw in our program. Thanks for the opportunity um, as an <laughs> unpaid supporter, uh, as a colleague in the, in the school system and as a neighboring school system. Uh, yeah, Roman uh, came out September 18th and 19th and in a span of two days visited all of our middle schools and did all the, taught all the freshmen in our high schools too. And we know pedagogically if you're going to be successful with kids, you have to engage the kids and uh, rapt attention across the district at all of our schools uh, through the video process through the professional athletes through the district attorney all those a lot of the slides uh, flashes you saw on the first slide were from the visit to our to our district and what went on there was an opportunity for kids to step up and take control of their lives and i encourage you as a, as a colleague in the education world to uh, open new hanover county up as well to join with us and a lot of the other districts in eastern North Carolina to, uh, for the kids to see this program and to see the positive benefits of making these decisions to be sold out for what they believe in and to keep a focus on their goals and to stay away from the things that uh, can derail that. Um, so I, without taking up any more of your time, uh, any other questions that you might have later from the school perspective, I, I'll be glad to feel that. I believe strongly in what, uh, what uh, Roman did and what SoldOutTV.com did and is, is doing for our kids in Pender County and uh, he's coming back to our district uh, again in the spring as we get into prom season to talk to our older kids as well. So I appreciate the opportunity and the time and for Roman uh, taking the time to call me. Uh, it's been a pleasure to actually make the drive down and, and uh, have a chance to speak to you. Thanks. Thank you. Next slide please. Real quickly, just to review with you, a lot of our program, uh, first of all, people ask, well, how much time does this take? Because we understand the time constraints in schools. It takes 45 minutes minimum, less than a period, to do the program on site. 
So it's, we work individually with school districts because they're all different. So we try to work a custom program based on what those principals want to do in that community. So we're totally open to how they want to accomplish it. We just do the preparation, we do the execution, we do the follow-up, and we provide the internet <coughs> video curriculum, which now schools are using in their health classes. Counselors are using that video curriculum, and we have schools that are using that in their orientation classes. Because uh, this is the website, at the top you see the sold out pledge, the kids just click on that and they go to the next page please. That's the pledge page. We went over that with them live, but we feel like with number one, a commitment in front of their peers at the school, number two, following up and going home with their parents, which is a tough thing to ask kids to do, and then three, to actually go to the site, put their first name in, their school, and take the pledge. Three times they're making a commitment that they're going to be alcohol abstinent and they're going to stick with that every day. Next slide, please. That's just one of our students, what they said, uh, in terms of that's what I receive when they make that pledge. We turn, uh, you see it's the first name only. Um, we turn the, a lot of our, a kind of a cross section of the results and what they're learning, what they've said they've done to our principals and to our uh, student services director. I usually schedule the student services director who I work with face-to-face uh, -face or athletic director, the ones who set up the school appointments. For a system this size, it would take me, uh, middle schools, it would probably be a two-day process. We do as many as four assemblies in a day, or three in one day, and two the next. Now, this is our video curriculum. What we've done is, is we've done three to five minute videos. We video, like you saw, all the videos are put into character traits, responsibility, how to, how to set goals, um, how to get, reach your passion, um, bullying, uh, alcohol and drug abstinence, uh, finding positive role models, you name it, we put it up there. It's one to three minutes long, it moves extremely quickly, it's video. I have a professional company that does this, that does our production so that we're reaching kids the way they like to be reached. Very quickly, fast, very entertaining, using music, sports, and entertainment to capture them and then to give them the messages inside that genre that they like to receive and are accustomed to receiving it. Next, please. That's one of the videos they would click on. So when they click on that video, it's 105, they show up all the time. That's on goal setting. We focus big time on goal setting in this program. Not just about setting goals, but the process by how you set goals. The details of what goal setting means. A lot of the students will get back to me and they'll say, I've never set goals. I don't understand how to do it. So what we do is we teach them not only on site, but in our video curriculum. The other thing that's cool about the video curriculum is I have colleges that I work with, athletic directors that want their student athletes in the schools talking about alcohol abstinence, being that role model that these kids look to. So I work with UNCW, I work with ECU, I work with uh, Appalachian State, NC State, um, several of our colleges in our university areas. UNCW student athletes have been with me in Jacksonville, they've been with me in Pender County, they've been with me in Brunswick County. So they are excited to have their young student athletes come out and speak to these. You can imagine the junior high students, how excited they are to see somebody where they want to go and what they do. Um, the other thing is we film all of our assemblies. So even if a student couldn't see them, all the speakers I have are put up on the website where they can hear from a military person, a law enforcement person, a student athlete, a coach, a musician. Something's going to capture their attention, but we're going to talk about the same things which is life skills, character traits, and setting goals. Next, please. This is, a, this is our Twitter page. A lot of kids Twitter today, a lot of kids Instagram today, so we put up pictures. They don't have to go anywhere but our website. All of our stuff live streams on the site as it's put up every single day. There'll never be a day where a student goes to our site where it isn't new. We update it all the time, and that's why I have so many kids that come back. Next. The thing for the school district that works well is we get a lot of great press. We have newspaper out, we have, uh, I think we had Channel 9 that was out in Greenville, we had uh, the NBC affiliate was here, Pender that covered us. And the cool thing is, is that the school district is getting the credit because you're allowing us to come in your schools and put on this program for your students. And of course, parents are excited about that, that the school system's providing a program that their kids are getting taught alcohol and drug abstinence and life skills and character traits. So we do newspaper, we do uh, online stuff, and then the other value of that is we're educating the community to the problem. 
And we're asking parents to take responsibility to have this conversation with their kids. But the cool thing about the program is, which kids love, is it gives them an opportunity to go home and have this conversation with their parents and to take responsibility and be mature about it. When I talk to kids in schools, I tell them, listen, you want to be treated like kids? And they tell me no. And what I tell them is, you want to be treated like adults, then we need to have a conversation that's adult, and we need to act like adults. And we're asking them to step up and take personal responsibility. This was an ad on Time Warner Cable that was done. It was, had statistics, had our program, and educated people to uh, kids and to the alcohol problem that we face in schools today. Next. These are just some, uh, these are just some comments, other comments from other school districts, from athletic directors to student support directors to principals to superintendents. You can stay right there. Um, go to the top real quick. This one's interesting to me. Um, the, Debbie Hodges, who I work with in Craven County, when she saw the program, this is why we're doing what we're doing, why we think this interactive program fits with the technology of schools and why we're getting so many kids that are following us. Says, we're so excited to work with Mr. Gamble. Sold out. I talked to other candidates that seem to love the program. The follow-up is the best part. Kids can continue to access resources 24/7 from the website. I also like the online pledge because of the personal commitment that allows for follow-up with the student to encourage and support them along the way. So many programs have an assembly. The kids take the pledge, then it's forgotten. But this is different. And that is why the technology has changed us. I didn't create this, I won't take, it, I won't take credit, <coughs> but because of the technology and the way this has come together over the last three years, that is one of the things that separates this from any other program I've ever done. May is I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. What is the cost of the school system? Nothing. Uh, we bring the program at no cost. I'm a 501c3. We raise our money from corporate grants, from public grants, private grants, and individual donors. Some of our sponsors in North Carolina are PNC Bank. Coca-Cola uh, and others like that that have a uh, charity side that is involved in a mission statement to help local communities and kids. Even Walmarts have helped me because they want to pour their money back in the community to help kids. And so, what does the school system have to do? Is, is it one assembly for one class? Our goal is to take every incoming sixth grade class and take them all the three, way through middle school and high school to be alcohol absent. I talk to sheriff's departments and police departments and I ask them a question. We're seeing 70% of sixth graders tell us that they're going to take this alcohol absent pledge and that they're going to commit to it. What if out of all that percentage we could get 35% foundation that would really go through their middle school and high school years with that commitment? And what the sheriff's department has told me and police officers, and I do work with police officers who come in with me and district attorneys and people on those lines. Uh, Justice Paul Newby has been in with me in the state of North Carolina who believes in our program. Um, one of the things that we've learned is that if that happened, not only would it affect the back end in terms of arrests on campus, behind the, what happens behind the wheel with youngsters, but it would educate kids to never try drugs and alcohol. And if we can get 35% of each generation of sixth graders to follow that when they're applicable, because here's my percentages. When you hit sixth graders, it's about a 70% feedback in terms of taking that pledge. When you get to ninth graders, it goes to about 50%, and when you go to juniors and seniors in high school, it's about 25 to 35%. So, for example, some of the communities I've been in for three years now, this year I talked to freshmen that were sixth graders in middle school when I talked to them the first time. 60% of the 70% that took that initial pledge are still keeping that pledge. And the reason why is because we're not only helping them with alcohol absence through this pledge program, which takes positive peer pressure and gets kids to respond to each other. But with all the things that go online and with them talking to each other, when you get one child, you get 10, because they're all following behind them. Robin, the other thing that we Robin, see, yes? Can I interrupt with just sort of a couple procedural yes, questions? Yes, Dr. Markley, sure. Uh, Message-wise, I don't think anybody disagrees. This is a great message. But we have a pretty strong social policy, teachers interacting via social media with students. <laughs> So you're an outside group coming in asking to have sort of access to that social media piece. And the other piece is you're taping every presentation you do, and a lot of our parents don't have, have not given us permission to use their student images. So how do you address those two issues? We haven't had the second one, anybody from the schools address that. Um, the first one is a great question. Um, I don't uh, get involved with social networking with the students. They get involved with each other. 
So, but they go to your website to your Facebook page, which is social media. Well, they go to, they go to the website to take the pledge. They can. Uh, what we try to do is we put the everything we do online, whether it's Twitter. I'm the one who controls that. Facebook. I'm the one that controls that. It live streams on the website, so it, they're not going to the social networking site. It streams on there on the website, so they don't even have to go there. Now, I understand where you're coming from with the concern with social networking, but we do not. Uh, we do not encourage the kids from a standpoint of me having a personal conversation with them about social networking. The only thing we do is. But you said you did text throughout the year to these to, to some of these students. No, but we, we, what we've done with the texting program is the students can sign up for that if they choose to. It's their, it's their call. And then what we do is we have a texting format that sends out character traits and life skills to them throughout the day. And they can do that any way they want or they can choose not to. No, none of the components in the in the program, though, are violating their privacy. It's their choice in terms of what they choose to take advantage of. Now, a lot of kids, when I come to their school, they're already on Instagram, they're already on Facebook, they're already on Twitter. Most of the principals that I talk with, I think this colleague can address this, they're already telling their kids during the assembly, turn your phones on and go ahead and go there and take the pledge, because that's where we're getting the most. See, what's happened in the past, I've done programs for about 20 years. You would send a piece of paper home with that pledge to their parents. Of course, we all know what happened to that piece of paper. It never gets home. But because we're able to get them to respond immediately, we're able to get kids inside the program within minutes of being in the program. And see, they're so used to getting information that's visual, and they're so <coughs> used to getting information that's fast, that when they go to the website and they see the tools that are there, we're able to do it in a fun way, but put the messages in there that they probably wouldn't want to talk about it unless you entertain them and you did something within that that got them there. So we use positive role models. Uh, we use musicians. We, and the number one thing across the board with every person that we use that I have come into the schools with me, that three rights is this, that they be alcohol absent, that they be drug absent. I'm not a proponent of bringing the guy who's been in prison for 20 years and says, man, I really got screwed up and I've partied my whole life. For the last five years, my I, I, I don't know if you're going to be picked up. I believe you need to. Uh, for TV, five, I don't believe you can be picked up unless the you're. The last gone. five years have gone really well. So the people I'm bringing in are young people that these kids look up to student athletes, coaches, military, law enforcement, people who are successful, who understand that everyone that's successful has success principles that they use and they're the same. And what we're trying to tell these kids is you too can access these success principles and life skills and be successful yourself if you'll just follow the disciplines and make them a part of your life today. So I have a lot of kids, and it's so cool because a lot of the kids will, will uh, respond on the web through the pledge in that little box you saw, and they'll say, man, I started setting goals for the first time. This is really awesome. Um, I went to my teacher afterwards, and she was working with me on setting goals. The great thing about teachers and principals is they'll come to me and go, Roman, it's so nice to have somebody come into school who's telling our kids what I tell them every single day. But the difference is I know that sometimes it goes in one ear and out the other because I'm talking to them about it every single day. So to have someone from the outside or guests from the outside verify what we tell our students every day really is an encouraging thing. So we are there to encourage the teachers and coaches in front of the students to make them look good. Uh, one of the things that we've tried to do is I meet with every principal on site. And every principal on site that I meet with, we teach how to use the materials, how to access it in their system. We answer questions and make ourselves available to teachers and coaches. So it's a customized program that we work differently with every school district. I mean, Dr. Markley may have ideas about what can and will work for him where other superintendents will have a way they like to do it. But I am not here to tell the school system because I'm not in your school system every day. I'm here to work with your current programs and with your people to do it the way you feel is successful. Yeah. Okay, questions? Any questions? I'll be glad to answer anything you got. No, thank you. Thank you for having me, and uh, I hope that we have the opportunity to serve your students. Um, one quick thing, and I know Dr. Holliday knows this, uh, my two went to Laney. My daughter graduated from UNCW. My mom, my dad, my uncles went to New Hanover High School. My wife went to Hoggard. I love the kids of this community, would love to serve you and support you in any way I can. And we'd love to be in this county because it's the county where I was born and raised, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.
Janice, um, I just wanted to clarify. Uh, you had asked Roman a question about the 45 minutes, and it is my understanding that there's one 45-minute assembly, and the rest is done. You know, right. Um, if, for example, if we were to come to your junior highs, we would go to each junior high for 45 minutes in an assembly within one period. Then, and then the next year they get. We would come back to the sixth graders okay. coming in, so it's a 45-minute commitment. Then the rest of what we do takes no school time whatsoever. We deliver that to your schools. We customize it to your to your schools to use however they, they want to use the website and the character curriculum. If they have a 45 minute session in the sixth grade, do they also have a 45 minute uh, session on each other grade? Well, Dr. Colley, for example, what they asked me to do, and I'm pretty pliable, they asked me to see the freshmen in high school in the semester and to see the incoming middle schoolers. Okay. We've seen juniors and seniors in the spring. We've seen freshmen in the fall. We've seen some places I'm in with middle schoolers fall, ninth grader spring. So it really is up to the school district about how they choose to execute. We just try to do it the same way and make sure we've got the time to develop and to put the program in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Been asked to take a break. We'll take a five minute break at this time. Is this a 20-minute, 5-minute? <laughs> Not going to be one of those 20-minute, 5-minute breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to be any breaks.